I was leaving home in New Jersey to attend the University of Miami. I looked at the college experience, wild parties, new friends, and preparation for a career in broadcast journalism. Sometimes, if it's on automatic iris, in my it's sophomore year, I produced a half-hour documentary the about the Florida manatee that won the local PBS station. About Nate Brooks. The Miami Herald had published a story about Nate, a Miami Hurricane football player released by the NCAA to make his own rap CD. Yo, Nate, who gon' draft you? Maybe the Raiders fit my character and my attitude. You can call it what you want. We're Nine months before Nate's story appeared in the Herald, Marlon Barnes, another Hurricane football player, and his friend, Tim Juanica Lumpkins, were murdered on campus. It happened just blocks away from my dorm. with Marlon in the James E. Scott projects of North Miami. It was Marlon who convinced Nate to come to UM to play football. They were the best of friends. After the media frenzy that surrounded the murder in April, I felt sad for days and a little scared. And now this Herald article was telling me that Nate, instead of feeling defeated by his friend's death, was finding inspiration in his memory. How could that be? I had the perfect story to follow. With your career, and you would blow up, and you at the University of Miami, I follow Nate the Great. <laughs> I think it's a small move on your part. That's what I do. I follow me too. Growing up in white suburbia, I had no idea what life in the inner city was like. And Nate, I discovered, was just as disconnected. We don't trust white people where I'm from. Like, only white people you see is the ice cream man. Hey, ice cream man, and stuff like that. White people around my house. The first time I followed Nate into the neighborhood where he grew up, the experience was new to me. Don't have no chip in that can for the people down with the DEA and the feds. Like, don't put that shit on me. Everybody has started looking like cups. The meal, man. Our household's like so tight, you know, and um, but outside, you know, my house was the ghetto, and it was like heaven and hell, you know, it was like bam bam. Inside, outside, you know what I'm saying? It's the opposite, but I had to take what I learned in the inside of my house, out there. Nate was a tough kid, and like most kids his age, not sure going. I was giving everybody the middle. I was like mature my ass. I got to steal, steal out the store. I got to take his lunch money. I got to get a gang. I got to... Uh, be gang related because I'm the smallest one. These females don't like me because I was pretty. I ain't got no girlfriend. I was like snagged or something, nappy hat. 
I wasn't having it, so I wanted respect, you know what I'm saying? And I had to get it because I had to be, I had to get my boys in, and, and we called ourselves the Mega Balls. Now with Morrow and Dad, Nate wanted to leave it all behind. Nate wanted to achieve everything at once. He was convinced that before long, he would be a guest on Oprah. <laughs> Nate came onto the stage of our project with good credentials. He was comfortable in front of the camera, and in Miami, he was already a star. Snap is good. It's blocked! Miami got it, and they'll have the football inside, the, and they're going to score! It looks like Nate Brooks has the football, and it's a touchdown for the Hurricanes. Tremaine Mack comes in from up top, blocks the punt. What a play by the University of Miami special teams. They blocked the punt with one seconds left to go. It looked like a forward lateral two, but it, play, but it wasn't called, and Canes go in for a score. Unbelievable, Frank. Just incredible. And the officials are standing around.